I guess you all know that, um, that uh, John Lennon, uh, together with the three other fellows uh, named uh, McCartney and Harrison and Starr, uh, were responsible for becoming, uh, I guess, the most written about, most listened to, most imitated uh, musical group uh, of the 60s. And for about eight years, uh, they were leaders in the musical world. And not only that, but it probably affected what um, a decade of young people uh, looked like and thought about and dreamed of. And uh, they achieved the absolute pinnacles of success. They were even honored by the Queen, an honor which they eventually uh, returned, I believe. Uh, I'm sure it doesn't uh, come as a surprise to anyone that the Beatles are no longer together. Um, in, in recent months, John Lennon and uh, has, well, John has sort of surfaced in the underground press where he gave a long interview in Rolling Stone magazine, in which he talked with some a great deal of candor and uh, some uh, bitterness, I suppose, about the old days. And his wife, Yoko Ono, is maybe uh, uh, one of the most controversial ladies since the Duchess of Windsor, uh, Wally Simpson, uh, kept the uh, Duke from becoming the king. Uh, tonight they are, however, quite above ground, and I am very pleased to welcome them here. Will you welcome, please, John Ono Lennon and Yoko Ono Lennon. <laughs> How are you? Uh, nervous, but okay, thank you. Are you really? Yes. Are now, you? Is that a, a little bit, yeah. but uh, it isn't as if we've never met, because we, we did meet once. We did meet in yeah. a dingy hotel room. Right. <laughs> so you're Jack Lemmon. Yes. <laughs> and you're oh, Fred Astaire. Yeah. <laughs> or is it Orson Welles? I'm not Fred Astaire. <laughs> Yoko, how are you? Fine, thank you. Good, good, okay. Uh, is there anything that you want to know about me to start off with that we could <laughs> just to sort of uh, what, get what the, do you do for to, a living? To get the <laughs> uh, actually, this is my profession. Oh, I know well, I you lived here. Yeah, I, I practically do. I hardly ever get out of here. The chair collapses into a bed, and uh, it must I be see. hard. It's it a it's a bed. Do, do you have my kind of show uh, in all yeah. over the world? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, been not everywhere. Quite as good, you know. They what? They're not quite as good in England at uh, yeah. repartee, you know. Why is this? Eh? Well, they're, they're more uh, inhibited, that's all. The, the you know, they don't have anybody that would sort of freak out mm -hmm. a little. Yeah. Unless Jerry Rubin comes on, you know. Oh, yeah. Rubin came over and, made, and disrupted uh, uh, a show done by... Uh, I can never think of the guy's name. David Dost? David Drost, yeah. yes. It was very exciting. Yeah, it was a very exciting show, actually. What actually happened? They came in and broke up the studio? They broke up the studio, and David ended up in the audience to show that he wasn't with uh, the young people, you know, which shows ah. where he's at, really. Out <laughs> there. Oh, personal, David, wherever you are, red light. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, uh, right. you know, I had a terrible feeling that... Um, my hair was going to be longer than yours. Uh, it's a funny thing, because I met you the other day. I, the recent pictures I'd seen of both of you, yours is extremely long, Yoko, and yours, John was very long. And, yeah. of course, people were going around saying, you know, I can't tell which one is which, and all. Oh, you know, oh, yes. That sort of well, uh, witticism. Uh, last year, I cut mine. Uh, we both cut it right off down to about a quarter of an inch. Uh, 69 yeah. or 70, I can't remember. Because uh, I just suddenly realized it wasn't functional, you know. To have it, when I had it down here, you just have to keep washing it and combing it. Yeah. So then I chopped it all off, and then, then it just grew a bit, and then I just let it grow to this length. Mm. What, what do you, what's your favorite length, Yoko? Are you at it right now? Well, it depends, you know. We like change, and we just don't want to stick to one. Who wants the same old haircut mm -hmm. every day, you know? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's have a different one every few months. You know? <laughs> that's my favorite. Did you save the hair? 
uh, uh, oh, yeah. any chance. Uh, one you, time uh, we cut it, we gave right. it to uh, some uh, Michael uh, Malik, who was running a sort of black house in London, which wasn't exactly a Black Panther thing, but it was, I think it was something to do with it. And uh, mm -hmm. they were just having a community centre in London, and we sort of symbolically gave it them. They were going to auction it off at uh, wherever you auction mm -hmm. hair off, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Some that big place in London, I can't remember the name. Sotheby's? Yeah, that's it. Ah. It never happened though. But it was a symbolic gesture, really. So oh, you don't solidarity. Ding. And that hair that hair today then is, is missing. Gone tomorrow. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> silly, silly, isn't it? Do, oh, you're gonna do this all the time. Spent this much time <laughs> it's gone already. Yoko, do you do you have fun when you're over here in uh, in this country? Oh yes, very much, because after all this is my second hometown. Yeah. She lived here for 10 years. People are surprised. They often say she speaks very good English. Oh. Uh, but you, you, you've been here a lot. Uh, well, some people ask me, well, can you speak Japanese? And then yeah. I get very offended, you know, because I am Japanese. Can you speak Japanese? Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Now you've offended her, haven't you? <laughs> get, get me out of this, John. I... Well, a uh, huh. funny thing mm -hmm. happened on the uh, way on in the way tonight. To... It never has to me. Normally. Not no. once in my life. Nothing happened. You must Whatsoever. tell him about that story, you know, whenever they talk to us and then they're not listening and then you start about that elephant. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have you, I suppose you get it, too, the when people meet you, us, you, know. you know, like in a restaurant or anywhere, when you're trying to order something, mm -hmm. you find that they're so struck by, oh, is it really you, that they don't really hear your order, you know? Mm -hmm. So when I'm talking to them, I'm saying, uh, I'd like a steak, medium, and uh, two elephants came and a policeman bit my head <laughs> off and a cup of tea, please. <laughs> And they're saying, yes, thank you. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're not listening, you know? Probably half of them aren't listening now, which is a good thing, I suppose. That, that's a terrible feeling, yeah. to think that they're never listening at all. Well, it's, it's surreal, you know, I don't mind yeah. that. Have you ever had elephant actually brought to you by someone who was listening? Or? And uh, bit the policeman's head off quite often, yes. <laughs> really? It's an old Anglo I'll, custom. You know? I'll believe anything. Mm. Where, um, you like being over here, I gather. I have had some English guests on. What do you think of yourself as English, first of all? Let's establish that. Well, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes, I mean, if, we, if, like, if you're asked, talking about being over here or being over there, then over I here. think, well, I'm from over there, you know. Yeah. But uh, I normally think in terms of, uh, I suppose I think in cliques and things like other people, like musicians and or mm -hmm. long hairs and or under 30, over 30, etc., etc. And being married to a Hawaiian, it makes you sort of more international. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Sorry about that. So Must be a mistake in my that, notes. You know? Well, people think of us as, uh, especially in England, not so much here, we get a bit more respect in America as artists, but in, in uh, back home, I think it's the case for all artists, back home it's a bit like, I'm the man that won the pools and lucky guy who had a spot of luck and married a Hawaiian actress, you know, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and, uh, which isn't true, really. Do you get well, it? Yeah. <laughs> because, uh, I'm from Japan and he's from... England, so somehow we found out that we're sort of passionately patriotic sometimes, you know, and we get, well, mm -hmm. no, I mean, that's Japanese made, or no, no, I mean, you know, English are the first ones to I mean, do we this, invented radar and penicillin, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it, it's a fine turning into a hard hat, you see, when we start mm -hmm. discussing, you know, mm -hmm. well, we're both islands, and we're both little, and we both did this, and we both did that, and we mm -hmm. find ourselves turning quite fascist discussing it. Yeah. You do. <laughs> made in Hong Kong and all that. Yeah. And you do jokes with each other, and you kid her about... Always laughing, Dick. Do you? <laughs> you give and laugh? After no. this... I mean, would you, would you stoop to, you, you know, Pearl Harbor jokes? And that oh, kind of yeah, we, I do all that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I saw speak English. Can I saw <laughs> oh, <no>. English <laughs> pig. Kabuki thing. Oh, yeah, have you, there's a kabuki you know theatre in Japan, things. and they have a I massive know. stage, and on stage they have the musicians with them. And you all the men play the part, you see. And all the men play the women's while they go, <laughs> <laughs> So that's kabuki, you see. I learned yeah. it after only one sitting. <laughs> it's very good. Mm. Even you, Japanese, do you know what it is? They start to laugh when he does that. Because it really is Japanese when he does that. I mean, kabuki, you know. Only our hip Very nips will notice that how funny it is, actually. There, there are two of them in Utah breaking up right now. And I've seen one on, on TV with yellow glasses, and he calls himself the hip nip, and he pretended to be Italian in the war, oh, I remember. Is, 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 so is Mr. Uh, Lennon putting me on? <laughs> I don't know. Ah. Fasten the tie, best in the whole world. 
Yo hablo poquito español. ¿Qué pasa? Wh whose move is it? We have a brief message of interest from people of various creeds and colors, and we will return. There we are. Now that we're fun through making fun of each other's nationalities <laughs> and other people's, you were saying? Yes, I just discovered, you know, so John was d d saying that he discovered that I chain smoke through this article that he was reading about me, you know. Somebody said I chain smoke. I said, ah, before. is that what it is now? And since then, you know, he never gets off that one. <laughs> but I just noticed that I'm liking what another one. What do you see? I mean, you see the video <laughs> that you chain smoke? Mm. Oh, smoking kills us, you see. It is. It does. You know, you're setting a bad example Didn't for adults work, all over the uh, all over the world. Didn't work, Arthur. Let, let, is Just that, does that ever happen to you that you find out something about the other from something you read rather than? Oh, actually... sure, sure. I mean, I, I began to suspect she chain smoke because every time I kiss her, I burn my chin. Of <laughs> course. <laughs> <laughs> and then I read it in an article. That's see, a wonderful yeah. delivery you've got. That's really that's well, good. Well, uh, you know, yeah. back on the boards. Yeah. But um, what, what was I, what was I going to say just before that? Do you Something have any about, idea? Um, um, we're talking yeah. about uh, um, articles written about you and all this. Oh, yes, well, I know, I know where I was. Oh, yes. I know where I was. What's that? Earlier, I said, you're, you seem to like it here. Because I've had English guests on, British yeah, guests, uh, who said they come here because they're stifled over there and they can't work and they like the exhilaration here. But then I've had American writers yeah. who have left America because they feel so menaced and threatened that they like the calm of London. Yeah, well, somebody and like Richard Chamberlain went over there and did very well, you know, from going from the soap opera to Hamlet, and uh, vice versa. I suppose people have come over here and broadened the scope. I think it's just a matter of you have a different kind of feeling when you're abroad, you know, maybe you can loosen up. But in Britain, we only have two channels of TV, and mm -hmm. if you watch the old British movies on, on TV now here, it's the same old men always on TV in Britain still, you know, they have a sort of school of actors about three new people got into the profession since I was 10. So it's, it's a bit it's, limiting, you know. Yeah. Oh, you do see uh, yeah. all the same old faces. But the best thing about British TV is the live stuff, you know, like mm. plays and things like that. But uh, it, it just goes off at 12, you know. So if you, you have a choice in England of either going out to dinner mm. or watching TV, you can't mm. do both. Like, but at, with America, it's great. You just sort of wake up and it's on and you, you get back after going out for an evening and it's still on, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's nice if you're sick. I love you know, it. You know when you're sick and you're up I'm all night? I'm always sick, that's why I like it. So <laughs> according to something I was but reading. But TV's all right though in a way, you know, they have also some nice... Well, it's not bad, my dear. <laughs> I'm getting used to British TV more than Japanese TV, of course, you know. Oh, yeah. I feel British sometimes, you know, that way. You do, does your accent change slightly when you're in England? I don't know. Yeah. People tell me that mm -hmm. I have Liverpool accent now. And she used to have an American accent, uh, yeah. being educated here at those funny schools. Sarah uh, Lawrence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's a I, funny I place, isn't it? it? I was there. Do, do, you have, do you still have friends from Sarah Lawrence that you're uh, in, in touch no. with? Ah, well, there was one that turned oh, yes, out to be yes. a snide. Uh, tell yes. him about that. A snide? No, well, yes. you see, a classmate of mine. Uh, sort of about two years ago. That was when we weren't really that famous that we were together, but yeah. we just... The first getting... article in America on us both yes. since we got together. it was very important for me, actually, look. because we sort of... I was introduced to America through that article, mm -hmm. and she was a classmate of mine, so I thought, oh, that's nice. So uh, she came, and I thought, well, you know, since we are friends, so I should cook for her and all that, and I made a nice lunch for her. And then she wrote that, uh, what was it? That, oh, she said that um, uh, Yoko was, uh, looked fat like an old witch cooking. She was nine months pregnant and just had a miscarriage. And that... Uh, I resemble Ernest Resembled Baldwin. Ernest Baldney, you know. <laughs> well, you can see that she doesn't. And that was I this mean, old pal that had sneaked in to see us. <laughs> you, you do like Ernest Baldwin. Oh, no, no, I, mean, I, like, I just I want like to say, Ernest Betty Baldwin. Rollins' legs. <laughs> was it Betty Rollin? Who yeah. wrote the article? Oh. Good old Betty, old pal of Yoko's. <laughs> Yeah. Betty and Rollins' I, legs. She says something about <laughs> Betty Rollins' legs. <laughs> okay, I think we can leave that one out. Some, silly to be so bitter, isn't it? Oh, yes, this, but <laughs> there's something about her legs. I, I never noticed anything wrong with her legs when I was married to her. Did you? <laughs> you weren't looking, obviously. <laughs> oh, no. She kept them long skirts on all the time. I so. was never. But, in Were fact, as a, as a matter of fact, no, I wasn't. You but she wrote an article on. recently in which she said I was delicious. Well, maybe she's uh, had a pill or something. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
But do you have, uh, you don't go to reunions at Sarah Lawrence. You were only there about a year then, I gather. Uh, three years, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. I didn't want to graduate, you know. I was one of those early dropouts. I just felt it was so ridiculous to go another year. I just couldn't stand it. And uh -huh. in those days, people said, well, it's so silly to not graduate, you know, that bit. Because mm -hmm. you'll never get a job. Right, right. Yeah. I was a bit afraid of that, of course. <laughs> you never but, make it. Mm. That's what they told me, too. That y if you didn't finish school. <laughs> One maths master wrote, you're on the road to failure if he carries on this way. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever, do you ever see your old schoolmates? Uh, 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 no, I've seen a few old school friends, not teachers. No. Yeah. Uh, most of them dislike me, except for one or two, you know. So I am always glad to remind them. Was there ever a teacher that... <laughs> incredible awareness they had. <laughs> was there ever a teacher who did inspire you? Yes, there, there was always one teacher in each school that would uh, usually be an art teacher or an English language or literature kind of thing. If there's anything mm -hmm. to do with writing or art, I was okay at it. Anything to do with science or maths, I just couldn't get it in, you know. Yeah. So, uh, but most subjects were science and maths because uh, supposedly they don't want artists, you know. Even at art school they tried to turn me into a teacher. They tried to discourage you from painting and, you know, why not be a teacher because then you can paint on Sunday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I decided against it. You know, your drawings are look a little like James Thurber's. Uh, well, I, I used to love his stuff when I was a kid. Oh, did was two people. Look like yeah. a bit like yours, you know, I think. Well, mm -hmm. he's older than me, so he oh, came first, so I look like him. <laughs> <laughs> I used to read that stuff point. when I was a kid. That, uh, three people I was very keen on, Lewis Carroll, Alice in Wonderland, Thurber, mm -hmm. and an uh, English uh, drawer, or whatever you call him, called Ronald Searle. Ronald Searle. Oh, we yeah. get him over here. Yeah, so yeah. when I was about 11, I was turned on to those three. When I was, well, I think I was about 15 when I started therberizing the drawings. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. That was my imitation of Nigel Bruce, one of your actors. I saw. Oh, really, Holmes? Remember he played Watson in the, in the Sherlock Holmes movies? Yeah. Oh, really, Holmes? It's dynamite, usually. Ella Fitzgerald, dear Watson. You thought, you thought it was Ella Fitzgerald? No, no, Ella Fitzgerald, dear Watson. That's a pun on elementary. Oh, elementary, my dear Watson, that's right. <laughs> I get it, yeah. Ella Fitzgerald. That's known, that's known as wordplay. Yes. I'm oh, I can play it that. Myself. Sure. Betty Rollins' legs. Hmm? Our <laughs> local station. <laughs> we, we, we will be rolling further after this message from our. <laughs> We're trying to figure out what it is I forgot that I wanted to ask you earlier. I just want to thank you for something? playing Paul's tunes to me. It's very nice of you. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. <laughs> I always get it. I sat in a restaurant in Spain, and the yeah. violinist insisted on playing yesterday right in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then he asked me to sign the violin, and I was... I didn't know what to say. I said, well, uh, actually, uh, okay, and I signed it, and Yoko signed it, and I, one day he's going to find out that Paul wrote it. <laughs> That's oh, better that's than funny. if they'd played Wedding Bells or Breaking Up That Old Gang of Mine. I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> maybe I, maybe well, I should have saved that for later. <laughs> you know, uh, well, let's talk about that for a second. Which, because, which, you, you know, Yoko, you've even, been, you've even been called the dragon lady who... Um, yes. The, yes. the lady who brought the Beatles apart and or took them all well, apart. Took I have apart. trouble with English. Can so we okay. please give her the credit for all the nice music that George made and Ringo made and Paul made and I've made since they broke up? If she, bled, if she did it. That's true. And now, uh, it turned out all right, didn't it? You turned, yeah. Anyway, but you were no aware of that. I mean, that the press saw, oh, always yes. saw you as the, the wedge that was driven in. Uh, the witch. On, I don't know how you can drive a wedge in three places or whatever, how many spaces there are between four people. But, um, uh, but that, well, that yeah. was the... How, there are millions of girls who would love to have met, let alone married, uh, one of the four, any one of the four, probably, but certainly a lot of them. <laughs> well, are. I resent to, you know, to, to think of him as as one of the four, you know. Yeah. I mean, or any one of the four, etc. Because I just met him as another artist and all that, and I didn't, you know, particularly realize that part of it really. You were a Beatles fan, or uh, before, or would you say you were a Lennon fan before? Uh, neither. Mm. Neither. She <laughs> didn't care for she either really of them? She didn't know about us. No, the I only really name she knew was Ringo, because it means apple in Japanese. Mm. And so. Ringo means apple. Ringo means apple. Yeah. Did you know so, that when you named your company Apple? No, no. Oh. It was just one of those happy accidents. Just one of those happy apples, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
happy applesauce. Mm. Uh, right number of syllables. Christmas. Ringo, if you spell it sideways, spells groin. Yes. <laughs> Star backwards is rats. I know, and it, there are a lot of. Do you do those things too? I find I, that I'm when always. When I go along the road in the car, oh. I'm always doing the signpost backwards. Anyway, she didn't split the Beatles because uh, how could uh, one girl split the Beatles or one woman? You know? The Beatles were drifting apart on their own, you know. Do, do, can you remember when you realized that it was inevitable that you would split up? Uh, I wouldn't, no. First, no. It's like saying, you know, yeah. did you remember falling in love? Not quite, yeah. no. It just sort of happens. How long was it fun? Yeah, well, everything's fun off and on, you know. Mm -hmm. So. I suppose it could have gone on being fun off and on, or it could have gone worse, I don't know. It's just that when you grow up, you know, we don't want to be the crazy gang, which they might know over here, which is British, or the Marx Brothers, which is sort of being dragged on stage playing She Loves You when we've got, you know, asthma and tuberculosis and when we're 50, you know. Here they are again, yesterday, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so I, a long time ago, I said that uh, I didn't want to be singing She Loves You When I'm 30. I said that when I was about 25 or something, which in a roundabout way meant that I wouldn't be doing whatever I was doing then, mm -hmm. you know, at 30. Well, I was 30 last October, and uh, that's about when uh, my life changed, really. And especially for John, I can say that he's at least sort of overgrown, outgrown, you know, whatever they were in, you know. Mm -hmm. Because I think it's very difficult for four artists who are so brilliant and talented to be together and do everything together, you know, I mean, just impossible almost. So whatever they were doing was almost miraculous, you know, that they were together at all. With all the pressures and everything yes, that yes, they had. And, uh, I, I guess the hard day's night, everybody thought that was what life really was like for you and that a man with a handheld camera had managed to capture yeah, the well, essence of Beatle life and that it was uh, always just yeah. a f flitting about in a lovely, carefree, joyful way. Um, well, it, was it, it ever like that? It wasn't that carefree ever. It was a lot more pressure. That was a sort of comic strip version of what actually was going on, you know. Mm -hmm. the pressure was far heavier than that. You know? And that was written after the, the, the author spending about three days, days with us when we played in London and then in Dublin and then back in London again. He wrote the whole of the film based on our characters, you know, uh, Clod Hopping Ringo, uh, Sharp John, Whimsical Paul and Stern George and all those the Beatle character myths were formed from three days watching us, you know, which yeah. uh, was a lot of junk really. Would you like me to get that for you? No, thank you. Oh. Mm. I don't really She's a female lib, you see. Do that's why I hesitated because I, I, I've had my fingers snapped off by ladies on the show that I tried to light. But you do light men cigarettes as well sometimes if you feel yeah. like it. If you're feeling gay, you know. I wow. <laughs> I do. <laughs> well, I'm one does like any sexy cigarettes, Betty Rowling, don't we? I mean, John, I interrupted you, though. And did you? I'm sorry. Or yes. we, or, you no, were what saying... I meant was, as a woman, you know, it's such a nuisance to have to wait for somebody. Mm -hmm. to, you know, that bit, too. <laughs> and, and do you make a point of opening the door for yourself? No, I don't make a point of it. You know, when I'm tired, it's always very nice if somebody opens. But I, I don't, you know, at the same time, I don't make a point about just waiting. You know, that yeah. is silly, too, I think. You know. Yeah, I think so, too. Mm. I, I think I disrupted something there, or got, I interrupted it. Well, really. I we, were talking, we were talking about the fact that the, the impression in the Beatles movie that was the... Uh, oh, well, that, that was, was it, really. Comic but, uh, strip uh, version of what life was like. Well, that was all I had to say, really. It was yeah. a comic strip version, and mm. it sort of stuck with us. And now for a small message from We'll Be Back. Something like that. He's right about that. We have a station break and we'll be back. The Nick Cabot Show with special guests John Lennon and Yoko Ono will continue following station identification. Oh, we're back again. And, and uh, wait. Uh, Yoko, yes. you work in film. Uh, yes. I yeah, and, and John has referred to you well, somewhere. You both, do, actually, but, you know, both of you. Yes. But John said somewhere that you were the, w one of the best unknown artists uh, in the world. The most uh, famous unknown, most famous artist unknown in the world, artist. she is, yes. Yeah, mm. yeah. Because uh, she's been in the so-called avant-garde world of New York for almost 15 years, producing... How many? Uh, 15 years, about. Well, it's a long... Uh, 10. Sounds like... <laughs> Something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was quite an established artist before she met me. And then once she met me, it was then she became Mrs. Lennon. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, uh, well, they, that's when they started calling her a Japanese actress, you know, when, when in fact she never appeared in any movie up till then. 
and really, but mainly. And uh, she'd been directing movies and having gallery shows and theatre shows and things like that. And uh, then it got swamped with Mrs. Lennon, but now it's just about turning around. People are realising that she's an artist in her own right, but she's still the most famous unknown artist. Yeah. Do you want to comment yeah, on that? that? That was Sorry. brought out because of yeah. this film that you're going to see. Yeah, somewhere. we have a piece of a film that you did. Uh, it's not, maybe the most famous film you did was one called Bottoms. I think so. Bottoms, which was in fact a film of, of, uh, of Bottoms. It was called Number Four, actually. Yeah. 364 Th Bottoms, five Bottoms, that was it. 364, 365. 365 five. Bottoms, one for each one day, for of each year. day of the year. Yeah. But it actually didn't contain 365 because I thought, well, nobody's going to really... It's a conceptual number, you know, Not and they couldn't mm -hmm. possibly count it, so... You mean that some, in some cases the Bottoms were the same one no, posing no, as other Bottoms? No, about 100. <laughs> You see, the <laughs> interesting thing about the film is apart, all the bottoms were the intellectual and artist people in London. Mm -hmm. And the soundtrack of the film is all of them trying to explain and be very uncomfortable about why they're taking the trousers off. Some guy saying, well, I normally do Shakespeare, you know. You know? <laughs> and yeah. then you see his bottom just, oh, and it's not cut to each bottom, but the whole screen is just two bottoms to each side of the buttocks walking like that. Yeah. And that all these comments are the saying, well, you know, like I normally do Shakespeare and uh, what's it all about and the real philosophy about taking your trousers off. And they're all jabbering on like that. They were yeah. intellectual, so they just had to sort of rationalize it somehow, you know, so they bring out Gurdjieff and Sartre and everybody out, you know, before they just take off their pants. And mm -hmm. it was really funny. But the, the point was that uh, I was asking to look for intellectual bottoms, you know. They have intellectual to be, bottoms, yeah, so, yeah. And so they would say, well, is this in, in, intelligent enough or whatever, you know. Yeah. And when you look at it on the screen, it's just all the same. And that was the point, you know. Mm. There's a show here called New Faces. Uh, what would you call? Well, never mind. Uh, can we take That's a look a at the piece of film you have? Are you going to oh, explain yes. about it? Tell us can what I we should look for. just quickly say that this is uh, a female lib film in sort of a, a quiet sort of way. And uh, it's, yeah. it's like a diary. You know, it's about a woman who's naked and who's lying down. And, uh, and fly, the fly is sort of uh, crawling over her body. And later it becomes, gradually becomes four and five flies all crawling over a body and the message is like you know uh, there's lots of things in it and all sorts of level of understanding I'm sure but it has something to do with you know a life of a woman who is more like taking it rather than you know doing it positively the flies crawling over you and just taking it you know a passive woman mm. let's take a look at that oh we'll take a look at that in exactly six seconds because six the fingers. film has a certain exactly amount of six fingers time we'll look at it but now, take me away, because I'm going to. That was, there's more to the movie, of course. That was Wait, only. It goes from head right through now, up to the toe mind. and back again. <laughs> from head to toe. Oh, yeah. And the, you notice the women always giggle. It was shown at the Cannes Film Festival, and he got an ovation, believe it or not. And, uh, it, but the women always giggle like mad, especially as it's getting higher. <laughs> yeah. it was just before it was getting very interesting, you know, I mean, sort of... It was just getting well, interesting, but of course we're on TV. Yes, this is television, I mean, after all. This isn't Channel 13, well, is it? I didn't even know you could... More! <laughs> More! <laughs> Betty Rowling! Hi, hi. I don't when, we, know when the censor found out the movie was called The Fly, you can't imagine what he, what he thought. Imagine. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe you can. The, the, the Fly, uh, you must have done an enormous number, enormous number of retakes uh, to get The Fly to do... Uh, uh. We had an enormous number of flies. In fact, the credits are almost as long as the, the film because there's so many people catching flies from the back of dirty New York restaurants and things like that. And then we're catching them in the room. Yeah. The girl was very good and her Who name was, was Virginia Lust. Virginia Lust, yeah. L-U-S-T? Yeah, L-U-S-T. Get out of that. Did the movie lead to other roles for her or, or The well, Fly? I, I should hope so. Well, I think well we've, after two years of making movies, we made about, say, 12 together and, and apart. And we finally got deals here with people called Genesis in America and somebody else in Britain. And they'll be going around all the different colleges. So before our films haven't really been seen, so nobody really knows that we're filmmakers. Yeah. We've had them in Cannes Festival. They did all right in there. We had them in the Edinburgh Festival. There's a mm -hmm. chance they're going in the New York Festival. They're definitely going to the San Francisco Festival. 
and they should be later this year starting to, about five of them probably will tour America. So then... So you're serious about film? Oh, sure. Film is, uh, well, it's like recording only with your eyes, you know, you just make it visually and it's just as interesting. And to combine the both is, is really interesting. How would you feel about me if I were to ask if Bottoms was shown at the Cannes Festival? Uh, Bottoms wasn't, no. no that, uh, was not, a, that was a bad joke. That was a joke. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that answers my question. Yes, we'll be back after will, this. No, wait, will, no. will, you, will, you, will you explain the, um, the, the people in the bags before the evening is out? Ah, uh, yes. Not, well, not now, yeah. but before the evening is you, over. Are you going to tell okay. the story of how you started the bag event? Yes, well, uh, that was when uh, some composer was going to visit me from Europe, and I was sort of... You know, I didn't really want to meet because I'm basically a very shy person. Mm. And then I thought, well, you know, people don't believe me when I say I'm very shy, but you're both actually. And then I thought, no, I don't want to meet him, but then there wasn't anything I can do. So finally, she, he was coming, and it was about an hour before he was coming, and I couldn't do anything about it. So I just, you know, out of desperation, made a bag, and I was in the bag when he came. To visit me. And all over bag or just over your head? All, all over. All over. Yes. That's and a terrific so saying, idea. Well, where's Miss Ono and all that? And, uh, oh, yes, well, it's you, is it? And all that. And he was pretty calm about it because he's heard of my work and all that. So he said, oh, is this your, you know, musical piece or something? And, yeah. I mean, it was very comfortable, you know, because then I didn't have to be seen, you know. I, I could see him, but I couldn't. And there's no prejudice. If people are in bags, you know, if, if a black man goes for a job in a bag, if everybody had to go in a bag for a job, there'd be no prejudice, you see. You'd have to judge people on their, on their mm -hmm. quality within, you know, and uh, yeah. we call it total communication. Mm -hmm. uh, we were asked to make a film for Austrian TV, which we did call Rape, which wasn't a rape, but it was called Rape. It was Rape by Camera, in fact. And yeah. when we went to Austria to show it, uh, we did a press conference there in a bag, and it was great. <laughs> Because all the press came in, you know, and th th we didn't, they never saw us. We were just in a, both in a bag. And they interviewed the bag and they're saying, well, is it really you? And uh, what are you wearing? And uh, will you sing a song and that? And why us? And they said, what is this? I said, it's total communication. Mm -hmm. I said, but why did you pick on us? We've never seen a Beatle. <laughs> <laughs> and it was beautiful. And they're saying, do you realize the Habsburgs lived here? And we're saying, yeah, so. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a great press conference. And uh, they, yeah. they all had a very serious conversation with the bag. And next day, the headlines in Austria were, you know, the show of bag and all the important press men all just talking to it. So there were, those are, in the audience, we have two friends which are in bags. Who are in, in fact bags. in bags. See, we, 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 must take a, we, we, we must take a break now, yes? That's right, we will take a break and we okay. will get to them uh, after that. Stay with us. I, would, they, would everyone wearing a bag please step up here so we could see what, uh, uh, the two people in the second row. Um, I've never had uh, guests, uh... Let it down, right? <laughs> you can see your legs, though. What's going on? Can I help you adjust your... Yeah. There we are. Ah, see, if they were going for yes. a job, you see, and you say, well, what are your qualifications? How do you do? And uh, what color are you? And uh, uh -huh. are you Christian or are you Hebrew? And, uh, yeah, you've got the job. Mm. <laughs> Let us know when you're through voting. <laughs> You know, I have no idea what sex either of you is, and, and, and I assume you do. Well, you uh, see, you could go in the bag I, I and make love to one of them and find out. <laughs> I, I would, but this is a very short segment. Oh, I see. Okay. Do you want to go off again, then? Uh, if Why we, don't you if dance we had off? more time. Yes, um, I know. Oh, they're leaving. Scene one, you've seen Wait, wait, wait. One thing. One thing. Uh, we, 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 you will speak to me. It's funny because I don't know you where to look. I don't know if, you're, if your nose or your eyes no, are come here. Back here. Are you a lady? Yes, I am. W would you hold where you are for just a moment? Just stay where you are. Um, I'm offering you a glass of water. I don't drink water. You don't drink water? <laughs> we did an Do interview. I, have I made a social faux pas? No, I think it's all right, because you don't yeah. know whether she's parring or fawing in there, do you? So it's all right. You see, we did a, a, a talk show in England, and every time the man wanted to talk about Beatles, the interviewer, because I'm fed up talking about them, I asked him to go in a bag, and he did it. And the, the interviewer, the Dick Cavett in England, he was in the bag all the time. So every time the, the camera panned to him, the audience broke up so he could never get the questions out. It's a very good show. Yeah. Hello. Thank, thank you right, for being here. All right, all right. Charming. Th th can you find your way down there? Yes. Yeah, okay. Very nice. You look very nice. Right? Yes, you're looking a little pale, but very nice. <laughs> they could be changing film, of course. 
They could be doing anything yes. in there for all we know. That's what it's we about. We will be right back after this message. For similar uh, reasons um, that I uh, explained either before or after this, I've forgotten. Uh, we can't have you sing live for us, but your voice is so unique that I wanted to get it into the show. And uh, could you tell us how, we're, how and what we're about to hear? Oh, well, maybe this voice is something else again, but uh, uh, this is going to be a single, my first single independently. I've had singles before with John, but it was always the B-side. And I think it's... <laughs> you were always the B-side? Now she's a uh, woman's lib. She's got her own first single. I Going think it's a beautiful song, yeah. and it's called uh, it's out Mrs. Now. Lennon. Mm -hmm. It'll be out now, yeah. yeah. It's called Mrs. Lennon? It's called Mrs. Lennon, yes. yes. All right. It's a very nice song. Let's give it a whirl, as they used to say. From her new album, Fly, out now. <laughs> How do you know how to make film, John? Have you studied it at all? Well, uh, no, Yoko was quite adept in filmmaking, uh. and she'd made a, quite a few films before I met her. I used to make eight mil films at home, you know, uh -huh. and superimpose and do tricks with it, and just play arbitrary records with it. <clears throat> but when I met Yoko, she said, well, why don't you do it seriously, you know? Uh -huh. So she sort of helped me develop in that area, and I find it's very similar to recording, you know, just visual, and it's, it's beautiful to work with. You understand the camera and all how it works, and... Uh... Oh, yes. Do you use an American he's camera or uh... getting so good now, I yeah. find it a bit, you know, he's too good for my liking these days almost. You know. he, well, she he... taught me filmmaking, I taught her sort of rock and roll, you know, yeah. and so I'm getting worried with these singles coming out and she's getting worried with my film, so it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of camera do you use when you... Um, both. Ariflex, Ariflex, yeah. 16 mil. All sorts, you know, we... Yeah. Film fans three, like to know that. We know cameras. the picture best, you know. At the same time. Sorry. Sorry? Use we use about three cameras at the same time, uh -huh. you know, because to get all the angles and cover it. Maybe. I mean, we know what a good picture is, so if you know what a nice picture is, then that's the start, you know. Say. Say. Is it true, that rumor that they used to, when, you, when the four of you were together, that Ooh. some of the, you and the other, oh, yeah. the other fellows, that, that those concerts, many times the din was so uproarious and all, nobody could hear anything anyway, that they actually played a tape and that you didn't really play? That, that was a rumor that we was, We never didn't ever mm -hmm. play though. Sometimes when your voice was so bad through losing your, your, your voice that you, you would be virtually, wouldn't be singing at all, but nobody would notice because there'd be so much noise going on. You could never hear what we were doing. You know, it just would become a sort of happening, like mm -hmm. Shea Stadium was a happening. You couldn't hear any music at all. And that got boring, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's why we stopped, really. Mm -hmm. I reckon now if I, if I went out, not as the Beatles, but just Yoko and I went out with the group, then uh, people wouldn't be screaming, you know, because we, our records are, uh, are better now, I think, and more mature, and I think the audience will be more mature too. That's what I'm hoping. I don't want any of that jazz, you know. You've said you'd, somewhere you said you'd like to be forgotten, but now you say you'd like to go out and perform again, so you can't really have... Uh, well, both. I can still be forgotten when I'm dead. I don't really care what happens when I'm dead, if that's what you mean. No, I thought you meant now. I thought you meant I'd just like it all oh, to go no. away and all the publicity you've had. No, you'd like I mean, to... Well, you see, with people like me and yourself, you know, if you're in a certain mood and reporters sort of asking questions which are angled to get an answer that they need for the, to sell their paper, and you're in a certain mood, you'll say certain things to them, but... And then people bring it back five years later, so oh, you said this, did you? <laughs> but you've forgotten yeah. all about it. You've changed your mood. It's a different day. It's a different year, you know, and you feel entirely different. So you're always held up to what you've said before. And I don't, mm. half the time you don't know what you're talking about when you're you talking to reporters. I, I have that same feeling. I always I want know. to say, well, I, either I said it or I didn't say it or I said it and didn't mean it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, or any of the above. It's like, you know, if everybody's words were recorded as they were saying it, there's lots of things you say that either turn out to be silly or you didn't mean it or the spur of the moment or you yeah. meant it or you had foresight or didn't. And it, it varies, but uh, when people bring it back, it, you've forgotten all about it. You know, I don't know what you're talking about. W which are you doing now? Uh, well, how do you mean? I mean, uh, you. what you're saying now you actually mean. I don't know what he's talking about. What's he talking yeah. about? <laughs> what do you mean? W which am I doing? We'll Hello, be back after there? this. Stay where you are. Anyway. Uh, I, I've been reading Grapefruit, um, the, and, uh, which is a book that Yoko wrote, and uh, it's got which a lot of... Which comes out in paperback in two weeks' time. 
It, it, it may even be out now in certain oh, yes, areas. It might so, be out so uh, if not, Paper you can. Back. If it isn't, you can. Re back, yeah. You can reserve your copy. I but do. there are things in here that you suggest people do, which is it's a book you can take part in, um, such as getting a bag of light and bringing it down and placing it where your light bulb would be, <laughs> and so on, which I find difficult to do. But I. Well, when you I do, like it, it. probably you'll find that it's easier than. <laughs> easier than yes. I think. If yeah. it's a book of instructions, like Yoko says, poetry is adjective and uh, prose is not what? Well, this is just what to, What's that story you tell about adjective I mean and noun? This is not adjective or noun, but it's mm. a verb, you know. Verb. You, you, you have to do, do the things in the book. It's a book of instructions. And oh. through yeah. doing them, you have, uh, it's like, uh, I don't know, you, you, go, you through go through a trip experience. and you go through an awareness. You have an experience. Let's do one fast. Okay. Oh, well, go on. What? That one. Okay. Which yes, one? Okay. I'll listen to your... Okay, go on. What do you do? Oh, so, why don't you... Do you want to use me in any way? Okay. Tell me what you're going to do. Oh, I'm going to get yes. this one. Oh, that's what do you need, yeah. John? Well, we listen to each other. Listen to each other. One of the original oh. instructions in a book was called Touch Piece, where everybody in the audience had to touch each other. And that was long before Esalon or any of those people, those really? things that where people are supposed to touch each other. In 1960, okay, she to did me that. Any way you want. Yeah, I'll have a listen. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I... I... <laughs> I'm laughing through your head, you see. Yes? Talk. Uh, okay. I, for some reason, I feel I should cough or something. Is there anything <laughs> happening inside? Can you hear anything? Well, it sort of echoes like a cave. Do <laughs> <laughs> you want to try it? Try it, go on. And if you move that, it comes different. Oh, it sounds... Go on. Hello, Dick. How are you? <laughs> All right. How are you? That's amazing. Fine, thanks. How's Rick? He's in the kitchen with Mom. Where's Mom? She's in the house watching paper. I didn't hear a thing. No, Dick, listen to me, sir. John, you swallowed a clock. Anywhere. So anywhere I want to listen to you? Yes. Yes. Are you serious, lady? <laughs> I have no really, secrets. I... No? Crazy, you know. Well, I ch let me close my eyes and just... Uh... <laughs> Happening there? Uh, it's on her shoulder for those with bad focus on their television set. <laughs> I don't. I can hear the audience. It's very strange. I think it's a nice way of communication. It's fun. Yeah, so I'd I like to do that. Total communication is peace. I mean, equal peace. You know, so we can to never each other. have peace unless the whole world would have total communication. This is just a process. So there's a piece in that book called Cut Piece, where most artists, when they give you something, they give, okay. make a painting or a record. Are we going to go away or something? No, we were no. going to take a look at ah. your piece. Oh, yes. okay, right. Do that. Then okay, we'll talk about talk Cut about Piece it? in a moment. Oh, this is John's the film. Yeah, tell us about your film. Well, this What's film is called Erection, and uh, it's not what you think. Uh, <laughs> see, I was driving through London once, and, or any city, and you suddenly notice, uh, if you go away, you come back, suddenly there's a big building there. Mm. And uh, I suddenly noticed this hotel starting to get built. And I had this idea to show the whole, the whole of the film growing, you see. So I got this guy to take still footage in the same position for one and a half years while they built the... <laughs> oh, hold on. He did it once a week, you know, every uh -huh. Friday from the same place. And the film is like a cartoon where these stills over the one and a half years, the hotel just grows up in front of you. It's and you see... Idea. And in the left-hand corner, you, you, you won't see it, but you see a bush going through all the seasons from summer to winter, the leaves come and go, and the snow comes and it goes. And gradually, at the end of the film, the whole hotel is there, people are in there, the lights go out, and at the very end, all the lights go out gradually in all the bedrooms, and then that's the end. It lasts 20 minutes, and it just goes one frame after the other. Let's take a look at some... Goes now. Uh, and the music um, is from Yoko's new album on the back, on the back of the film. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Out now. The movie is called Erection. That was a short bit out of the middle of the film. I'd love to see the whole thing. It looks well, terrific. We have, we have to get a message from our local stations. We'll be right back. Starts from nothing. <laughs> Yoko, do you do exhibits of your work now? Can I see it anywhere, a, a collection of your stuff? Yes, of course. Of course, if you want to find out about my work first, if you buy that book, which is coming out oh, great now, you know. Did I mention this earlier? In paperback. Yeah. But at the same time, in uh, Syracuse, uh, there's the Neverton Museum, and I'm going to have the first museum show of mine oh, there. Oh, good. Uh, that's show. in New York, Syracuse, you know. Syracuse, New York. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, 
It's going to be a one-woman show with guest artist John Lennon. <laughs> and uh, we're going to do the whole... Do know, that again, they missed it. About... Uh, oh, uh, sorry. A retrospective show of all my pieces for 15 years or so, oh, and good. new pieces as well. And that's going to be from October 9th, which is... I said it like that because that's John's birthday, and I thought it was a nice birthday gift. Yes, thank is you. that your birthday? Yes, yes, yes it opening. is. 31 is What terrible. does that make you? 31. But that they've given up the whole museum. Young, it's a beautiful museum. It's the most, meant to be one of the best museum buildings in America. And they, the whole museum is for Yoko's show. She's going to show 10 years' work up to now with new, all new work, plus films, plus happenings and whatever. It's going to be fantastic. You know, I've been Syracuse, October the 9th and onwards. <laughs> <laughs> I've been listening to Imagine, and, well, and nice. Oh Yoko is going through my head constantly. In fact, that's great. The, the song. Uh, there's cover. something about the, I don't know what, it's it goes through your simple, head sort of like, like a... Like three blind mice. It's like a, a chewing gum commercial yeah. or something. I don't yeah. mean that in there. I mean in, I know, the, in well, that way of... It's a it's simple love zen. song, you know? Zen. Is it Zen? Yes. I don't yeah. know, but it's a simple love song to me. Chewing gum is Zen, so you know. Bubble gum, you mean? N no, no, just plain gum, oh, like the actually. Wrigley commercial. Well, I'm glad you like it. Co I thought, uh, I thought um, of the album, which they're plugging now out now, mm -hmm. uh, Imagine, uh, no, we thought Jealous Guy and Give Me Some Truth was going to be the ones, but people seem to like Imagine and Oyoko the best, yeah. which is, I, I did not think they'd like Oyoko, they love it. Well, for complicated reasons, you can't sing for us here, one of them being that you think you play the guitar badly, which I find amazing. No, but I said uh, I'd have to rehearse a group first, yeah. and uh, I haven't re... I, because we're doing something else, I can't rehearse the group before sure. we come on. I can't just play uh, off, you know, one off like that without rehearsing. <laughs> however, so, however, however, we, however, through the magic of ingenuity, yeah, we, we have, brought we along. Will, we will, mm. in any case, see you do Imagine. Yeah, this Can is you a guess clip, how? This is a clip from a film we're making of showing uh, my new songs from the album and some of Yoko's new songs from her album. Mm. And this first clip is the beginning of the film. It'll be slightly changed in the end, but this is roughly how it, the film starts, called Imagine. On TV, probably this September. And here it is. <laughs> Just take a minute. We'll, we'll do that in a second. We have a message from our local stations, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Oh, we don't have much time left. If, if any, does anyone have any idea how much time we do have? Let me confirm quickly a couple rumors with you. Yes. One of them, has it ever been settled whether Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds was a code for anything? It never was, and nobody believes me. I even saw uh, some famous star introducing, I've forgotten who it was, introducing a Lennon McCartney show, and uh, it was Mel Torme mm. saying about how Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds was about LSD. This is the truth. My son came home with a drawing and said, showed me this strange looking woman flying around. I said, what is it? He said, it's Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. And I thought, that's beautiful. I immediately wrote a song about it. Uh -huh. The song had gone out, the whole album had been published, and somebody noticed that, that the letters spelt out LSD. And I had no idea about it. And of course, after that, I was checking all the songs to see what the, the letters spelt out. Yeah. They didn't spell out anything, none of the others. And, uh, it wasn't about that at all, you know. They could do that. Eleanor Rigby. But nobody was, believes, uh, you see. Yeah. Stood for there was Henry the group. Horse in a song I wrote called Mr. Kite. The, the lyrics, which I got most of it off, was an old poster for an old fashioned circus, you know, from the 1800s. And it was all about Pablo Fanky's fair, and the horse yeah. was there. Mm -hmm. And they said Henry the Horse was horse, which I didn't know anything about happiness then, you know. Is the warm gun. And Happiness is a Warm Gun was another one, they said, which was banned on the radio. They said it was about shooting up uh, drugs. <clears throat> And it was, the, it was the front of a gun magazine which said, happiness is a warm gun. You know, they're advertising guns. I thought it was so crazy that I made a song out of it. Do you ever think of anything, uh, I don't know if you knew Janis Joplin well or Jimi Hendrix we, we didn't or all meet, that. But she sent me a birthday tape on my birthday. Our yeah. Last birthday, Yoko asked all different people to make a tape for me, and she was one of them. And we got it. After she died, it arrived in the post mm. that she was singing happy birthday to me in the studio. What do you think could be done about drug overdosing in well, or out of the profession of I music? I think the, the basic... <laughs> thing nobody asked is why do people take drugs of any sort from alcohol to aspros to hard drugs and that question has to be resolved first before you think well what can we do for the poor drug addict why do we and you and anybody have to have these accessories to normal living mm -hmm. to live 
That means there's something wrong with society that's making us so pressurized that we cannot live in it without guarding ourselves against it. Mm. So it's that basic, the more problem. Communication. I think if people are allowed to be a bit more free and express yeah. themselves, they wouldn't have to inhibit themselves by taking drugs to not be hurt. People take drugs and drink so as they don't feel what's going on around them. Mm -hmm. Total freedom for everybody is our goal, you know. That way, you know, it will be a utopia. People yes, are frightened of freedom. It. They think yeah. freedom, oh, there'll be excesses. Of course, there would be excess to an extent, and then it would settle down. Yeah. The way the, the porno films don't pull so many people in now. So what? It, it'll, it'll level out. Mm -hmm. And uh, all forms of freedom will be the same as that. If people are allowed to be completely free, it will le level out, and people would be less inhibited and not be frightened of each other and wouldn't have to take drugs to prevent being hurt by each other. We are we're almost Don't out of time. Was that, was that your house, by the way, in the film? Uh, that's that our house, yeah. yeah. I just yeah. wish to mention that uh, my son visits me every weekend at that house, which is a beautiful home in Ascot with 80 acres of ground. Uh, Yoko's daughter is not allowed to visit us because uh, her ex-husband won't let, let her see him, let her see her own daughter. All Yoko wishes is that now and again, Kyoko could be brought to that house to spend some time with her mother and with my son, Julian, because it's a beautiful home. We have eight or ten children living there that belong to the staff. That's wonderful. And uh, we're not allowed to see our daughter. And uh, Yoko's going mad, as any mother would, because uh, her daughter's been withheld from her. That's all we have to say about that. But that's the house waiting Sorry, for yeah. her, if you're yeah. watching, Kyoko. We must take a message from our locals, and we'll be right back. We've come to the end, and there are a lot more things we could talk about. Uh, maybe you can drop back sometime when We'd you're love to. stateside. Maybe next time we'll, uh, we'll really perform live for you. You know, I'd like to do it. Oh, that'd be wonderful. <laughs> thank you. We will. Uh, thank you, John. Just, I'd just like to say yeah. we're going on the road next year. Mm -hmm. uh, John and Yoko and a band that I'm putting together, and we'd, we'd like to come and do live performance uh, wherever we can. We'll have the carpet out, and we're Thank going you. away right now. Thank you, John. Thank you, Yoko. Thank you.